Um, but uh, she's a little bruised up and whatnot, and Lord, and she's hurting a little bit. And so we just ask you for your hand on her um, uh, uh, and, and heal her up well, dear Lord. And so, Lord, we ask that uh, you just have your hand all over this message. That, Lord, you just, man, Lord, are, are we available? As, as we walk through this message, this message that you, you've, you've shared with me to share with this congregation, this message that, that I ask that your spirit be the one who delivers, just use my voice. That's it. But that 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 it, that your spirit would deliver this, and that we would we would be open to being the leaders you're calling us to be. We'd be open to the message you have before us, and we would consider through this entire thing, this entire message today: Am I available? And change that from Am I available to I am available. Father God, I ask for hearts that are changed, transformed today. Father God, I ask that that that, that you just have your hand all over this, that you just move in mighty ways today father god we also we come before you with this prayer that that your son taught us to pray our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven and give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. You know, I just pr- I pray that you truly, truly feel welcomed and loved here today as you came through those doors. I pray that the Spirit just overflowed you today. I truly just welcome. I mean that. When I say welcome home, I mean welcome home because everyone who walks through those doors is a brother or sister or has the opportunity to be. Um, and, and so I just ask that, uh, or I, I pray that uh, you will, you have already felt blessed and that you'll continue to feel blessed throughout this day. And another thing I want to share, I almost forgot, um, and, and I feel bad that I did because I am a huge supporter of our military. Um, ben Jamin, where did he go? Oh, uh, Braden, you want to go back, bump that heat up, or the temp up a couple degrees, if you would, please? Uh, I hate seeing people shivering in church, so, um, and especially when it's not the Holy Spirit doing it to them. So, uh, but uh, I just want to share, uh, anyone in, who's a veteran in here, and I know it's not Veterans Day tomorrow, but it's Memorial Day, um, and, and we have a lot of veterans who've gone before us, and there are veterans in here, and there are active duty in here, and I just thank each and every one of you, all of our military um, uh, thank you so much for being willing to lay it on the line. And I want to thank the families thereof as well because uh, when, when the men are away at war, guess what? The wives are at home. They're still raising kids. Um, they're still living at home. And, and, and it's not an easy battle for them at home alone either. And so, um, yes, they, they don't have bullets shooting at them, but the devil tries shooting bullets at them. Okay, and so so just thank you, and, and as, we, as we walk through tomorrow, I just encourage you to remember those who've gone before that allow us to be able to sit here today, okay? Allow us to be able to, our, our God has protected us, he's guided us, but he's used armies to do it as well, okay? And so uh, very grateful for our, memo- for our servicemen. Uh, my father uh, did two tours in Vietnam, my younger brother, uh, spent time, a couple terms in, and 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 I have a ton of relatives who were a ton of I had, I think it's seven uncles that served in Vietnam as well, um, and so that I know of, and so um, uh, I thank you, thank you to all who are serving now and all those who served uh, before, and so praise God. Um, so as we begin this series. Um, Back on track here. Um, As we begin this series, uh, I don't want you to think that this series uh, uh, about being a leader, um, that this series is about uh, you suddenly becoming the next president of the U.S. or the the next uh, CEO or the next John Maxwell. That's not what this is about, right? This this series is about us being the leaders that we're called to be. Um, This series is to help us to lead better in the context in which we live, okay? This series is about to help us lead better in the context in which we live. It's it's not about being better um, as as we in the world tend to think of it, right? It's but being better as God calls us to be. And so that might be in the context of just 
just you as a person, that you you in your walk, your faith, right? Uh, you as a leader in your family, a leader to your children, a leader to, to uh, maybe a leader in, in school, right? Maybe getting in there and the school is doing things it shouldn't be doing, right? And then you're a leader going into that, right? According, according to scripture, not according to what I want, right? And so, um, but a better leader in that way, a better leader um, in our community, a better leader uh, in life in your context, not necessarily for you to shift and uh, now I got to go elsewhere and suddenly, oh, suddenly I'm going to be a preacher, man. Suddenly that's it, right? Pastor said we got to change context, right? I'm not saying that, not at all, right? Now, I'm not saying God won't do that, okay? I'll let the Spirit do what the Spirit does. I love it. So, um, but I'm not even saying you need to just shift jobs, right? Um, I'm saying that 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 uh, this is us leading better in the context that we're in so that when we're going forward, we're a better leader than what we were behind, okay? Or up to this point, even coming in this morning, okay? So um, God just wants you to be a better leader. In fact, why don't you turn to someone near you and just say, God wants you to be a better leader. All right? Because he does, right? I mean, it's, it's truth. Um, so as we open up um, I'll, I'll, uh, about Moses and this series, um, again, this is an intro, okay? Today is an intro to the rest of this series, okay? So I'm going to give you a little background today. Um, so uh, before we get too deep into uh, uh, Moses and, and Israel and all that, um, I want to get, uh, before we get, uh, when we get into Exodus 2, Exodus 2 is where we get Moses is born, right? And, and so, um, and, and uh, when, when we step into Exodus 2, Moses is born, the children of Israel, um, literally children of Israel, because uh, um, it's not just of the nation, right? But literally Israel's children, because remember, uh, uh, Jacob, uh, God changed Jacob's name to Israel, and that's where we're, Moses come from Jacob. And so, um, so literally, uh, the children of Israel are in captivity. And, um, uh, but the thing about it is this, right? They're, they're slaves in Egypt, okay? The Hebrew nation is enslaved by Egypt, but they didn't, the, the children of Israel did not enter Egypt as slaves, the children of Israel did not enter Egypt as slaves. Okay? They, they, check this out. See, they actually, they entered as guests of Pharaoh. They actually entered in as guests. What happened is it wasn't that they came and they, wa- they wanted to be enslaved by Egypt. It wasn't they came, they wanted to become Egyptians, uh, serve the Egyptians. It was none of that, right? Um, but the reality is they, they, uh, uh, there was this famine, okay? Um, and and when, when they came to Egypt was there was a famine, and and uh, they came seeking assistance. Okay, and what happens? They came and they got they came for the comfort and, and the the peace that the, and the and the, and the refuge that Egypt offered. Okay, and then then the problem problem is that not not the problem is that that uh, uh, they stayed. <laughs> okay. Uh, they stayed. Not not the problem is that they came, but it's that they stayed um, after they should have moved on. Um, see, and and so what happens is so Moses. We talked about this a little bit here a couple weeks ago. Uh, Moses, uh, remember how he, his brothers threw him in the pit, sold him into slavery, blah blah blah. He ends up going to. Long story short, is ends up working for the Pharaoh, right? And so uh, being second in command to the Pharaoh. And so he's in charge because he'd interpreted a dream that the Pharaoh had had, a vision that he'd had. Um, he interpreted it and said, look, there's this massive famine coming. Uh, we need to prepare for it so that we're ready for it when it hits. And Pharaoh's like, go for it, do what you need to do, put him in charge of it, right? And so he ends up being in charge of it. And um, um, so, but in Canaan, where, where, where Jacob, Israel, and his his children are at, where the the tribe is at the Hebrew nation. Um, their 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 group is is over there, and they're they're hungry. <laughs> they got no food, but they heard there's this food in Egypt, so they go to Egypt to to get some government commodities. Okay, and guess who's handing out the government commodities? Joseph, the one who supposedly was dead, right? Because his brothers threw him into the pit. Right? And, and, and sold him in slavery, ripped up his clothes, poured blood on him, told dad that he died. So, man, wild beast got him. Right? And so they think he, so, so Jacob, Israel, was thinking he was dead all this time. Lo and behold, here's Joseph giving him food. 
And so what Joseph does, not only does he provide those who meant harm for him, right? But God said, check it out, it's going to be good, right? And, 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 but, but they come, and not only does he give them food, but he also goes to Pharaoh and says, um, I, I need a favor. And so Pharaoh says, put them on the best land we have. Okay, so he, he says, give them the best land that we have, let them live there. And so they do. And so they end up, they end up living there and in, 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 in the land of Goshen, okay? Um, and so this gave them safety, it gave them comfort, it gave them refuge, it gave them the food they needed, it gave them everything they needed, right? And again, it wasn't that that was a bad thing, but, but they didn't, the, the problem wasn't that they went to Egypt f- to find refuge, the problem was that, that th- they stayed in Egypt, okay? And so we, we have to understand that sometimes we go to a place, God takes us to a place, he gives us comfort, he gives us refuge, he gives us a place to go or a person to go to. But usually it's for a period. It's for a period of time, right? Um, so so that's, that's where the, the struggle comes in because otherwise what happens is we go and we get there and we get comfortable and, and we get that refuge and, and it's not necessarily... A healthy place for us long term okay and and so that's what they did here is the problem was that that they um, they didn't leave when they should have okay and so uh, it, when when we come and we stay and we stay just in that comfort we stay in that 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 sweet spot okay this is just nice and easy peasy lemon squeezy right we tend to want that don't we but when we do that, a place of comfort can become a place of confinement. A place of comfort can become a place of confinement. It becomes, we become imprisoned in it, just as they did. They came as Pharaoh's guests and ended up becoming his slaves. Okay? Let me, let me take this to, let's move forward to 2022. Okay? Okay. Um, this last couple of years especially, okay, it, it just, it's been building for a long time. This last couple of years seems to have accelerated. A lot of people are struggling with a lot of stuff, right? A lot of baggage going on, okay? And the, and, and the problem with that is, or the, the, the problem with that is that we have a tendency to uh, um, either crawl into a bottle or start taking pills or some sort of drug, right? Um, now, now, there's doctors who will prescribe you pills to help you through this anxiety or this whatever, right? For, but it's supposed to be for this period of time, but you, it's not a thing that's supposed to be for lifetime, right? Problem is, we like the way it makes us feel, so we hang there. We crawl into that bottle, we crawl into those pills, and, and we stay there, okay? It wasn't bad to help. It wasn't bad when you had that accident and they gave you the pain meds for that, right? That wasn't bad. That was to help. That was good. But then the addiction came, and the imprisonment came, the confinement came, okay? It's not, usually when we get into that place, it's not because we, we, we just wanted to be there. Oftentimes, especially in today's world, oftentimes it's because we're struggling with something, we end up in the wrong place, and we turn, and we don't know, we don't, the problem is, uh, oftentimes is that we don't, we don't turn to God first, right? But even when it's that accident, and it was the pain meds that suddenly you were addicted to. You didn't know you were going to be, right? That, that's, that's the difference. So 2022, right? Uh, um, that, that's what it looks like today. Moses, um, there's some people who, some people don't choose to be in their confinement. Okay, they don't choose to be enslaved. Some people are born into it. That's where Moses was at. He didn't choose to come to Egypt. He was born in Egypt. He was born into slavery, right? It wasn't an option for him. That's just what it was. He was born into it. He didn't have a choice on it. By the time Moses uh, is born, 430 years have passed since the Hebrew nation came on their own. Uh, since since Joseph's day, the Pharaoh no longer the the Pharaoh. Some might not understand. There, there's it's, there's many Pharaohs. Okay. Um, there's the, the pharaoh that's the same as the king, okay? It's the ruler, okay? Um, so the pharaoh, 430 years later, doesn't remember Joseph. He don't even think about there was that famine back then, right? He's not even, that's not a thing. His concern, when Moses is born, the pharaoh's concern is that, that um, 
the Hebrew nation has prospered very well. God, God likes to make us fertile. <laughs> um, and they've prospered very well. They've become very numerous. And there's actually enough that he's afraid the Hebrew nation could outman his Egyptian army. And if they rebelled, they could take over. That's where the real fear comes in for the Pharaoh. So the Pharaoh puts out a decree that all male, he, all male uh, babies born, born to Hebrew women should be thrown into the Nile and killed. Okay, so that's, that's his decree. That's his fix for this, is he wants them all thrown into the Nile, wants them all drowned or eaten by alga, uh, crocodiles. Okay, so, so 430 years later, from, from them coming as guests, they're still there, and now they're a threat. They're a, the, the Pharaoh's become afraid of them. And so um, I want you to catch what the, what's really happening here, because if we look at this, um, Pharaoh is actually sacrificing God's children, the Hebrew children. He's actually sacrificing them to his own gods. He's at, the Pharaoh is making God's boys into God's, his God's sacrifice. Pharaoh is making God's boys, big G, our God, his boys, his sons of the Hebrew nation. He's turning them into sacrifices to Pharaoh's little G gods because the Nile River was a god to the Egyptians. The crocodile was a god to the Egyptians. So he was feeding the gods with our god's children. Okay? That's something you might not have thought about before. Exodus 2, verse 1. Are, are, is everyone with me on this? Have I lost anyone? Okay. So I know we've got some sidetracks there, right? And so, but Exodus 2, verse 1. About this time, a man and a woman from the tribe of Levi got married. Okay, and I'm going to stop you right there. We're going to take a sidetrack, okay? Uh, so I wanted to make sure I had you with me before we stopped the bus, okay? So, um, so here's the thing, right? Um, a, a Levi... Uh, a Levite, remember in, in, when the tribes were all, the 12 tribes, the tribe of Levi was the tribe that God said, that God decreed, that's where the priests would come out of the Levite tribe, okay? So uh, what this is saying is that Moses is born to a, a priest's da son and a priest's daughter. Not the same priest, okay? Um, so, but, uh, 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 so he's born to into the priestly uh, tribe, okay? So technically, really, uh, Moses, according to the Levite tradition, Moses is definitely in line to become a priest, okay? And so he's born to a priest. Um, and so so it says, uh, then it says, the woman became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She saw that he was a special baby. God revealed to her that he was a special baby baby okay that he was a special son he was had a special purpose god revealed that to her um and so uh she so she saw that he was a special baby and kept him hidden for three months but when she could no longer hide him she got a basket made of papyrus reeds and water uh, waterproofed it with tar and pitch she put the ba baby in the basket and laid it among the reeds along the bank of the nile river the baby's sister then stood at a distance watching to see what would happen to him. Soon, Pharaoh's daughter, Pharaoh's daughter, okay, let me stop you again. So the guy who decreed they're all supposed to die, all the Hebrew boys should be killed, his daughter has now come into the picture. And that'll change some things. She saw, uh, uh, no, oops, sorry about that. Uh, soon, Pharaoh's daughter came down to bathe in the river, and her attendants walked along the riverbank. When the princess saw the basket among the reeds, she sent her maid to go to get it for her. When the princess opened it, she saw the baby. The little boy was crying, and she felt sorry for him. Check this out. See, she's someone who, she's Pharaoh's daughter. She knows all the Hebrew boys are supposed to be thrown in the Nile and either drown or be eaten by crocodiles or both. Okay? She knows this. Yet, she felt sorry for this Hebrew baby who's crying, okay? God can soften hearts, and he softens hearts often, okay? He can soften the heart of someone. She should never have had a soft heart for this Hebrew baby. In that day, Pharaoh says, it goes. That's it. 
He was their God walking on earth, okay, as far as they were, the Egyptian nation was concerned. And as Pharaoh's daughter, she definitely knows, right? And so, so um, for, but God can, can soften those hearts, right? And, and God can soften or harden hearts to work for his glory, okay? God can soften or harden hearts to work for his glory. And in this case, there's a softened heart to get Moses where God wants him to be. She, um, this must be one of the Hebrew children, she said. She knows. She's not confused, right? She says it. She says this must be one of those Hebrew boys, one of those Hebrew babies that's supposed to be drowned or, or eaten, right? She knows that this is, she's not a, she's not a dimwit. She's not a, she, she, she understands what's going on. She understands who this is. She knows who the baby is. Um, not, she doesn't know Really, she doesn't know, but she knows it's a Hebrew baby, right? She knows it's supposed to be dead or killed. And, and yet, even though she's not confused, she says, uh, let me help, right? And so uh, Pharaoh has, has made, given the order for this baby to die. His daughter's like, mm, maybe not, right? I'll, I'll take care of this with pops, right? And so, um, so his daughters uh, uh, feel sorry for the baby. And then it says, then the baby's sister approached the princess. Should I go and find one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you, she asked. So, so Pharaoh's daughter knows it's a Hebrew baby. He, she knows this girl's been watching and now approaches once they've gathered the baby. And conveniently, this girl, who happens to look maybe a whole lot like that baby, right? We, we get that, right? And she's like, oh, I can go get one of these Hebrew women to come and nurse the baby. Well, that's awful convenient. Because we know that's a pretty narrow window of women who are able to do that, right? Because, ladies, you can't just wake up in the morning and go, you know, I just feel like, I just feel like nursing today. I think i got to find me a baby, right? That ain't happening. She's putting two and two together. We know she's a very smart, intelligent woman, and and she uh, she's she knows this baby. Now there's this daughter or this this sister. She's she can figure this out, and now they're going to call in the mom, right? And so she she so the daughter the the sister says, "Hey, I'll, I'll go find someone to a Hebrew woman to nurse the baby for you if you want." And her response is, yes, do. And it's, in, it's got the exclamation point. Yes, do, do, come on, yeah, go for it, right? Um, and so, so, yes, do, the princess replied. So the girl went and called the baby's mother. Take this baby and nurse him for me, the princess told the baby's mother. I will pay you for your help. So the, so the woman took her baby home and nursed him. Y'all see what happened here? I th this is incredibly interesting. Pharaoh's daughter, who knows this baby, should be dead or be killed because it isn't dead yet, right? She knows this. She knows she's figured out this is sis and this is mom. And she sends mom home with the baby, says, go nurse this baby, go raise this child up, right? And guess what? I know my dad said he's supposed to be dead, but guess what? I'm going to pay you with dad's money. My allowance is going to you, right? She's going to use Pharaoh's money to pay the mom to raise her own, to, to, to nurse her own son. I love the way God works, right? Absolutely. That is some cool stuff. Man, I just, I just like, wow. And so anyway, I mean, you can't even take, you, Hollywood wishes they could write this stuff, right? They're, but they're just Hollywood. They're nothing, right? They're not God, right? And so, I mean, this is just like, Wow. And so the thing is this, right? Let me point this out. Uh, God wants to do the same thing in your life. He wants to do this. He wants to rescue you. He wants you to be nursed where you need to be nursed. And he wants you to grow strong. And then he's going to adopt you as his child. If you're willing. Because are, are, are we born as a child of God? No, not until Jesus becomes our Lord and Savior, and then we are, we are adopted into God's family. Right? It's right in our scripture. Right? I'm not telling you nothing new, right? He wants to adopt us. This is a beautiful picture of what God wants to do with us. 
It's a beautiful picture of it. And, and, then, and then to make P- Pharaoh pay for it. Because think about this, right? She's going to adopt him. You know what that means? That means Pharaoh's going to be grandpa. Okay? You know what that means? That means Pharaoh's going to train this child up. Pharaoh's going to raise this child up. Pharaoh's going to feed this child. He's going to clothe this child. He's, he's going to do everything for this child. This child, and ultimately, she doesn't know it at the time. Uh, she doesn't know for sure that it'll come to fruition, but her, the anticipation would be that he will become the next Pharaoh because she didn't have a child. And so the next one in line, right? And so ultimately, he would become the next Pharaoh. That's what she wanted, what she was thinking. Now, God, he's got another plan, but, right? So, so Pharaoh's going to pay to train up the next, the next Pharaoh, although what God's going to do with it is free his people through this child. I love what God does. I love what he does. And even though it seems like uh, in, in our life we, we, have, we, we have these struggles, we have these challenges where, you know, um, um, Man, we go through this stuff, and, 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 and man, we just don't know how we're going to get through it, and we start feeling hopeless. We feel, start feeling uh, uh, like, like there's no way this can work out. There's, uh, I'm doomed, right? We get this doom and gloom going on, don't we? I mean, uh, man, I've been there. I've done that. I used to try drinking my way uh, through it all. It's, uh, it's going to go away. In the morning, it's still there, no matter what you do, right? It's, it's still there unless God is involved. Because, see, there, nothing is hopeless with God. Nothing is hopeless with God. Right? And, and man, so with God, I mean, they're, they're, man, it's just amazing. Um, our darkest moments, um, God already, when, when, we, when you're going through that challenge, when you're going through that struggle, when you're going through that, that stuff, whether it's an addiction or it's a bad marriage or it's a, it's a lost child or it's a whatever it is, maybe it's a car accident, it's, it's, you know, whatever, disease, cancer, whatever, right? What, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're trying to get to the other side of, God already has a Moses in the basket in the reeds waiting for you to pick it up. It's already there. Moses is already, he has your Moses there. Will you seek it? Are you ready for it? Are you available? Are you available to receive your Moses? And when you see your Moses, will you acknowledge your Moses? That doesn't mean you're going to adopt a kid. That comes a whole lot of different packages. So all you guys are like, I don't want to raise another one, right? And you don't know. He's got a Moses for you. It's in a basket. He's got a miracle waiting for you to, to, to happen for you. And it's just, are you willing to step into it? Are you willing to pick it up? Are you even going to acknowledge it or notice it? Will you even recognize it? Are you following what God's calling you to do, doing what you're supposed to be doing, just as God laid this all out and they had no idea Pharaoh's daughter didn't know? She didn't know she was being used by the, the Hebrew God. She had no clue. Unfortunately, some of us have no clue about our God. Unfortunately, some of us really don't know who our God is. Unfortunately, some of us still think he's a little G. But our God has a Moses. He's in a basket. He's in the reeds. He's waiting for you to come along. Your Moses is there. Are you going to be available to pick it up? You're looking at what you're in. You're thinking, man, I don't know how to get through this. I don't know what to do here. I'm struggling. I can't figure it out. Here's the thing. God's already got it figured out. God's already got it figured out. It's not a surprise. God isn't going, oh, dang, there's that basket in the reeds. Right? He's already got it figured out. The problem is, are we listening to him? Are we taking the steps he's asking us to take? Are we going over to the basket? Will we embrace what he's calling us to do? Will we adopt that Moses? Whatever that Moses looks like in our life, are we willing to adopt what God's laying before us, the freedom he's given us, the freedom from our bondage, the freedom from our confinement, the freedom from our our enslavement, 
freedom from Satan. He's got it all laid out. He's got it all planned. All you have to do is go to the basket. Are you available? Pharaoh wants to destroy the Hebrew nation. God says, I don't think so, boy. Ain't no way. I have a plan. I have a plan. And here's the thing. You think you're going to destroy my people. You know what? You're going to pay for my people's resurrection, my people's salvation, my people's redemption. You're going to pay for it. Satan will pay. He will pay. Over and over again. He's just like, you vile, nasty little bugger. <laughs> you have no idea what I'm going to do. You have no clue. You think you're better than me. You think you're smarter than me. You think you're greater than me. That's why you got kicked out of heaven. That's why you're going to spend eternity in hell. It's going to be hot. And it's going to be painful. And it's going to suck. And you're going to be there. But you think you got it figured out. Satan has no idea what God's got going. It gets us back to that, that old saying, what man intended for evil, God intends for our, to use for our good. What man intended for evil, when the boys threw Joseph in the pit, get this, 430 years earlier, Joseph is thrown in the pit. Joseph is actually a little over. Joseph's thrown in the pit, sold into slavery, thought to be dead, by his father at least. And yet that's connected to Moses showing up 430 years after the famine. Yeah, God has a plan. You and I might not ever see the fruit of that plan. That's okay. We may never sit under the shade of the trees that we're planting, but that's okay. Let's keep planting trees. Let's keep gathering into baskets that God puts out before us Let's keep free in God instead of confining ourselves in this world where we're at. Exodus 2, verse 10. Later, when the boy was older, his mother brought him back to Pharaoh's daughter who adopted him as her own son. The, price, the princess named him Moses for she explained, I lifted him out of the water. I lifted him out of the water. She took him from the water. I'm not sure how this message is speaking to you this morning. I'm not sure what you're taking from this message this morning. I can tell you it has a whole lot to do with how you came in. What you take away has to do with how you came in this morning. Did you come in ready to reject God? Did you come in ready to reject his word? Did you come in all about yourself this morning? Or did you come in with an open heart, with an open spirit, ready to receive whatever it was God had for you this morning? That's going to make a difference how this message speaks to you. This message is going to speak to you. I don't care who you are. He's speaking to each and every one of us here. It could be your first time or it could be your 101st time or your 201st time or whatever, right? I don't care what it is. It, he's speaking to you. He spoke to me through this message. I know he's speaking to you. But it has to do with how you came in. Were you ready to receive? How did you worship? Oh, I'm not putting my arms up. I don't want no one to see that. I don't want no the song. Raise your hand. I raise my hands. I raise my hands. But did we? Did we raise our hands? Did we truly worship our God this morning? Did we come in with an open heart, ready to worship our God? Praise His name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. Even in our struggles, even in our challenges, did we come in saying, Hallelujah, praise the Lord, Amen. Because if you came in going, This sucks. Can't believe I got to go through this. Well, I guess I'll go to church. I got nothing else to do. If we came in with that attitude, guess what? You're probably not getting the same message as the person who came in and said, Hallelujah, praise the Lord, Amen. We receive what we look for. And if we look for manure, we'll get manure. If we look for the beauty that God desires for us, we'll get the beauty that he desires for us. If we're looking for his love and we're wanting to share his love, we'll get his love. That's what we'll receive. 
I've had a couple people tell me that lately it sounds like I'm angry in our messages. There's no anger in me. I'm not angry. I'm heartbroken because I watch people sit here week in and week out, week in and week out. Oh, great message, Pastor. Oh, great. Oh, it is. Oh, oh. that really, that hit me. That's, uh, that's what I needed to hear. Then why aren't you doing nothing with it? I'm not angry. I'm heartbroken because guess what? Some of y'all, you're going to hell. I'm just being honest. And now some of you are all going, oh, well, I don't think I'm going back. How do you even know I was talking about you then? Right? I mean, we come in and we claim God changed. Oh, this happened, that happened. Oh, he's, oh it's different. And from now on, oh, I'm never going to go back to what, and, and we're right back where we were. And that breaks my heart. The Egyptians chose to stay, or the, the Hebrews, I mean, chose to stay in Egypt until they were enslaved. Slowly and surely enslaved. They chose to stay there. Not where God wanted them, but where they wanted to be because it was comfortable. It was a refuge. It was protection. Our protection should be from God alone. Our refuge should be in Christ alone. Right? Our peace should come from God alone. How did we come in today? And how are we going to come in as we continue forward? Because maybe you're sitting here going, man, I really boogered it up today. Man, I just did not come in right. That's okay. Today is only today. God willing, there's still tomorrow. God willing, there's still next week. Right? So you, you, we don't have service again until next week. Well, you can go online, check it out online, right? Okay, so you can go to service again. Get your heart right again and see if he doesn't speak to you in a different way. You can do that. Um, it, but, but God willing, you're going to be here again next week. God willing, he'll speak to you again the way that you came in, but God willing, your heart's going to be right next week when you come in. I, I'm not angry. I've never been angry. Heart broke, yeah. I have loved ones who die, and they continue to reject Jesus Christ. I have loved ones who die, and they continue to say, well, I, uh, you just don't, you don't really have to have a relationship. You don't have to be a part of it. You don't have to, uh, you don't have to read your scriptures. You don't have to blah, 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 blah. And no matter how I share with them, you know, they, they say the prophet's not welcome in his own village, right? And it's true. It's true. They remember who I was. Think of me as I was. And this isn't, whoa, pity me. What I'm saying is this, they don't see the change. And that's the same change they can have. That's the change that can happen in your life if we come in and we're ready to worship God. If we come in with an open heart and a hungry heart, Lord, I want more of your love, right? And we're just pouring out the love, right? And you, as, as uh, man, I just, mm, man, we cannot love each other enough. And, and when we come in, and sometimes we're just like all in that doom and gloom mood. I'm like, dude, come out of it. Right? Okay, do that too, okay? So some of you ladies are in there, right? And so, but, you know, but here's the thing, right? He loves us so much. He wants to give us a Moses. Are we going to accept it? Are we going to embrace it? Are we going to gather the basket up? And when we walk out each week, are we going to walk out the same as what we walked in? Or are we going to walk out renewed, revived, and alive? Who he's called us to be. Are we going to actually embrace what the Spirit's putting in your heart right now and turn our lives around the way that he's calling us to turn them around? Are we willing to do that? Are we willing to commit ourselves to him? Are we willing to be exactly who it is he's called us to be? Or are we going to be, uh, I'm comfortable. Miserable, but comfortable. Right? Please join me as we go before the Lord. Dear Lord, thank you. Thank you for today. Thank you for this moment, this time. Father God, this is your message. I'm so, so thrilled that you allow me to share this message, to be the mouthpiece of this. Father God, it breaks my heart to watch people walk away in. And that beautiful message that you had for them, they reject it over and over again. Father God, I ask that today 
There's no rejection here. I ask there's no rejection, but rather all embracement, dear Lord, embracing what you have for each and every person here. Father God, the people who are here are who you desire to have here today. There are others who have rejected you, but every person here is someone you desire to have here today. You desired them here because you had a message for them. Those who rejected coming today, who rejected being a part of this today, have rejected you so they did not get their message. Father God, I pray that you soften their heart that they will be here next time, that they can hear your message next time. But Father God, each heart that did come today, each heart that hungered today, e even the hearts that were like, I guess, begrudgingly, I have to go, I have to do my Sunday thing, even those hearts, I ask that you still transform them in miraculous ways, Father God, that right now they'll open themselves up to you, that they'll, they'll, they'll be exactly who you ask them to be, who you desire of them to be, who your Spirit is prompting them to be. And Lord, I ask that of myself as well. I'm not done growing. I know that. Father God, I ask each and every one of us to not leave here the same as when we came in. And as we gather for a meal, dear Lord, I ask that you, you would uh, bless the time that we have together, the opportunity that you've afforded us. The opportunity that you've afforded us. There were some who, in their hearts, when, when, when I shared that we weren't going to be doing the gas buy-down, were like, well, that sucks. But God, I hope now they embrace the fact that maybe your Moses for them is going to show up today during this meal this time together, this breaking of bread together. Father God, I just ask that, that everyone em embraces the opportunities before us here this morning in this, this noon time. Let us find more nutrition out of our time together today than we do out of the food we eat. Father God, as we come to your table, as your son taught us, he taught us to to come and, and he, his body was broken for us. And he said, take, take this bread, take this, this is my body broken for you. This is my body torn for you. Take this, eat, and do in remembrance of me. And when, when, they, when he took the wine, and he blessed the wine and he said, Father, uh, he said, take this wine and drink. This is, this is my blood shed for you. Take this and do in remembrance of me. And so, Father, as we come forward and we take the wafer and we take the juice, as we come forward, let us remember that it's your body, it's your blood. It's not mine. It's not anyone else's. It's yours. Jesus said, come and do this in remembrance of me. Let us remember him. Let us revere him in this time. Let us get our hearts right right now in this time. Father God, there are some here who desire to give their life to you right now. There are some who have given their life to you, but they've taken it back. And right now they want to recommit their lives to you. And Father God, I ask that you would help them in that. Father God, I just, just embrace them as they say, Lord, I just want to be yours. I, I am available. Take me, use me as you desire, as they, they're praying right now in their hearts, they're praying that, Lord, you would, you would receive them. Father God, I ask you to receive them. I ask you to forgive them. Father God, I ask you to, to, to reinvigorate them, to re, uh, uh, Lord, just re-empower them, to, to empower them to do what you ask of them to do. Father God, today, stepping forward from today, from this time. Father God, you don't care about our past. You care about our future. You, you'll forgive our past. You'll forgive our sin. You'll forgive our wickedness. You'll forgive our evil. Father, you want us to be righteous going forward. You want us to be right in your eyes going forward. You want us to, to be redeemed and Father God, so today I just ask that as they come to you and as they ask you in their hearts to, to Lord, forgive them, as they, as they declare they are going to serve you, they're, they are available, they are willing, they're ready. Father God, I ask you just to overwhelm them with your love, your passion, your mercy, and your redemption. 
Father God, I just thank you in advance for all that you've already done today. I thank you for all that you've already done today, but I thank you in advance for what you're going to continue to do today and all you're going to do going forward as we come together as a community and become stronger in our community here as your bride so that we can better serve our community together as your bride. Father God, I just pray all these things in your loving Son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. So in this time, 